whether we're moving horizontally or not. And something like this, just time the axis. We don't need to use the delta time here because it's actually, with the forces, it's a, it's a one shot. It automatically works out the sort of time thing for you. Again, that's because the physics updates happen in, uh, I believe, a fixed update, which runs at a specific rate, which is definable in your project setting physics. Nope. Where is it? Somewhere in here. Time. There we are. The fixed time step, which you can change. So it runs at every uh, 0.02 seconds. So I guess that's uh, 50 times per, per second is the fixed time step for the physics. And, um, and that's why you don't have to worry about putting in delta times and things for add force. Uh, there are a couple other variants um, that do take into time. You want, um, it's like set acceleration. If you look at the, uh, if you look at the, um, the instructions, or rather the uh, the reference documentation for the rigid body, you'll see there are a few different ways to add forces to the object, but usually you use add force. Oh, it's impulses and such. I think that's what I'm thinking of. I don't use it very often. Anyway, so now we should be able to add an X component based on our horizontal axis. Now, if I'm not moving, again, the ball should launch straight up. Okay, that works. And if I'm moving towards the right and I fire, there you go, I do give it some, some angle. And if I move towards the left, there we are. And so obviously we can fiddle around with the magnitude of all those things if we so desire. And the nice thing about it as well, if you are using some sort of joystick and you're just barely creeping along, then you get the ability to launch at you know a much shallower, more refined angle. Or if you jam it all the way to the right, then you're going to have a full speed movement. That's something you can't do on a keyboard, but it works here. We could also um, implement some sort of mouse controls for just the, we could follow the mouse around with the paddle. Um, and we'll probably look at mouse input in at some later date, but for now, I'm going to just keep it keyboard control. So now that we've got that. That's great. Um, the next bit will be even more sort of like, let's make it a game type functions. So I think the first thing we need to do is make it so the ball can die and lose a life. Um, and as with everything else, there's a few different ways we can implement it. We could say on the ball script, just make it check every frame, what its Y position is. And then when it gets below a certain point, then we could have it to fire off the sort of, oh, I, I am dead event. Um, I'm going to use a slightly different way of doing it simply because I, um, I think it's going to be a little bit more flexible if we decide to change our map size a bunch. And, uh, and maybe we're going to have interesting maps later on where there is multiple places where you can die. Maybe there's going to be gaps in the walls over here. And if the ball goes through there, it'll die. So what we're going to do is implement a sort of just a big trigger zone. So let me create a new game object. I'm going to create a new cube. Um, yeah, this is fine. And like like everything else, there's a bunch of different ways to implement it. But I'm going to start by throwing in a cube. Let me uh, center it on the Z axis and also on the X. And then I'm going to take this cube. Let me take the forward view, actually the back view, and move it down here. And then we're going to make it much bigger. We're going to scale it at least as wide as our screen. And then the height doesn't really matter, but just I'm going to make it nice and big and visible like that. And I'm going to move it right up to the bottom of the map like so. Right. And what I'm going to do is a couple of things. I am going to, I'm going to remove the renderer, first of all. So now it won't be displayed on the screen. Not that it matters because it's too low, but let's say I moved it up here. So with the renderer on, you can see that it shows up in my camera. And with the renderer disabled, or I could actually just remove this component entirely, and I think I will. Now it won't show up at all. Actually, I'm going to leave it on. That way I can always toggle it to display things. Um, now, if I keep it as is, even though it's invisible, and I've moved it up here, if I launch the ball, it's going to bounce up against it, which is not what I want. I do want to keep the box collider. If I remove the box collider, then nothing would collide with it. Things would pass right through. But I actually do want the collider because I want to be able to test for collisions. Instead, I want to switch it to a trigger. And now, if I fire the ball, it goes directly through the object. But every time it goes through, it's still going to fire off a, a collision event. Actually, it's going to be a trigger event. But that's exactly what I want. And I want it you know, for testing purposes, I'm going to leave it up here. So this is going to be my, I don't know, my death field, right? If the ball hits this, it dies. And I'm going to go ahead and create it as a prefab just because I may want to repeat it again. I may want it on the sides or, or maybe, you know, there's, there's some other death zone somewhere. Maybe it's, there's even one in the middle of the very screen, although I might want a more interesting shape. And actually, I probably wouldn't want to use the prefab for it because I might want to have something visible there. 
who knows? Or maybe it'll just be part of my background graphic, and I'll just so happen to superimpose the death field on top of it. Lots of different ways to put it together. But we will need a new script, so let's get started on that. C sharp, I'm just going to call it death field script. And let's open this bad boy up. So really, the only thing we need to worry about in here, and I could just get rid of these functions altogether, but let's leave them in for now, is on trigger enter, I think. And I work in too many programming languages, I keep forgetting what specific names are in various contexts. But let's give that a try. So flip back over to Unity. I have too many things running. And hit play. And again, my uh, my death field, remember, is, is hanging out above here. So if we switch to the console and hit space. Nope. Damn it. What have I done wrong? So we've got the death field. It's there. It should hit. Let's turn on the uh, render again for now, just so we can see it. In fact, uh, we could give it a nice, like, deadly type texture as well. So I spent some time checking the documentation and staring intently at my code and being 100% convinced that my code should work just fine. And I was getting kind of frustrated. So I stepped away. I went and made some breakfast. And about halfway through making my eggs, I realized what the problem was. I had forgotten to attach the script to my object. It's that simple. I need to minimize this. My death field script needs to actually be on my death field, for example. Uh, and there it is now. And now if I hit play, I'm going to get my on trigger enter event. I get one immediately because it's actually overlapping um, one of the objects, probably the background or one of the walls, something like that. There's some, some overlapping there. And then if I go and hit my space bar, and launch it. There we go. Again, another debug log. And again, every time it enters, it's going to fire, fire, fire off, excuse me, my on trigger enter. Fan freaking tastic. So we've got that resolved. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and on this bad boy, I'm going to turn off the mesh renderer once more. All right. So next thing is we actually have to have it do something when the ball enters here. And what I could do, well, there's a few things I need to do. Um, but the, the what we need to do, <clears throat> so the next thing we have to do is make it, no. so the next thing we have to do is make it so that when the ball enters the death field, something actually happens. And so we're going to flip back over here to the on trigger enter. So this fires whenever any object is detected as entering our death field. So first we do need to establish that what we have is the ball as opposed to something else. So on trigger enter actually does get parameters here, just like the on collision enter. It also gets a collider and other. Actually, it, it's, it's worth noting, it's actually slightly different. On collision enter gets a collision object with details about the collision. On trigger em enter simply gets the other collider. So ideally, the other, other is a ball. But we don't know that for sure. And one of the best ways to test it is simply to check to see if it has a component with a ball script, a ball script component. You can do this for literally any type of component. If you're doing this in JavaScript, you want to do something like get component, um, and then I think you would pass the name as a string. Actually, I think this works in C sharp as well. But this, you'll get a component that's typed the right way. So ball script, um, I guess I'll just call it a ball script like this. And um, so on our other object, the object that entered our death field, it's going to try to pull a ball script component off of that. And then we just check to see if the object actually has one. So if ball script, if it's not null, then do something. And what we're going to do is we're just going to call ball script dot um, die. 